Hi everyone, I wanted to create a tutorial on how to use splines to create revolved objects. And the object we want to make today is this Coke can. So there's a good side view, top view, and uh, a bottom view. I got these off the internet. This is an academic setting. I'm not making any money off of this. I'm just teaching uh, Maya skills. So thank you to the people at Dreams Time. If I were doing this for a commercial application, I would definitely want to use my own photos and not hijack anything off the internet. Okay, so let's get going here. I want to bring in that side view into Maya. We do that by going and pressing View, Image Plane, Import Image. And let's go navigate to where I've got those kept. Okay, and let's turn off the view, or sorry, turn off the grid. And if I press the Space button, that will enlarge this view. I can just press it again to go back to my four view. And let's start making splines. I want to show the difference between uh, a setting here. If, if we are in the Polygons drop-down menu, we still have access to the Create CV Curve tool. Um, but we're going to be doing most of our work with surfaces, and that opens up our Edit Curves and our surfaces. So be sure you're in the Surfaces drop-down tab and not Polygons. Come up here to Create, go to CV Curve tool, and hit the Options. I want to show um, the difference between the default setting three cubic and then one linear. So if we're in three cubic and we just start making a spline, notice how the software averages between these points and creates a smooth curve. That's the three um, cubic. So if we come up here and create CV curve tool options and make it one linear, when we create a spline the software does not average between the points. And our application is for low poly um, video game models, real time models. And so we want one linear, not three cubic when we're making our splines. Okay, so I'll select those, delete them, come up here to create CV curve tool options. We got one linear on. Let's zoom in to the bottom of this Coke can and just start creating a spline. So I'll click here in the, somewhere in the middle, come over here to where it starts curving maybe do two on every curve, maybe three there. Zoom out a little bit, go to the top, click, click, and then let's make a little bit of a lip right there. Okay, hit enter, and Hit W for the Move tool, and scoot this thing to the right, and there you can see the spline I just made. Right click on it, go to Control Vertex, and you can see the points that I clicked. Alright, so what about the top rim of that Coke can, the, one that we, the, the rim that we see in that view? So I'll make a separate spline. I'm just going to eyeball it. I'm really more interested in making the points right now than the accuracy to the, to the, to the photo source here. So I'm just going to oops, create. Come over here to create CV curve tool and let's just create the rim. of the top of that coke can. Look at how primitive it was. Remember, this is video games. This is not photorealism by any means. So we're approximating these shapes and we're just getting as close as we can given the density of polygons that we want to work with. So I just put in some points here. Um, let me right click, control vertex, zoom in a little bit, and let me do a little bit better job of placing those and approximating the size. That's really all that's needed. Just like that. Okay, so now the question is how do we attach that to that so we have one spline? You select the first one, hold the shift button down, select the second one, come up here to 
edit curves and press attach curves. Now look what happens. It made a third spline out of those first two. So I'll slide that out of the way. Here's our first two. I'm going to zoom in and if we go to the control points, um, what it did is it averaged a position between the second to last point right here and the second to last point right here. So we have some cleanup to do. So come over here to control vertex and we can probably select two of these and delete them, leaving this third one. Uh, remember, there's a little bit of a lip there, so uh, I'll just kind of do that. Scoot this over, scoot that up, and that kind of denotes that, that little lip. All right, we can always make changes later, and this looks a little thick, so let's scoot that over. And that doesn't look quite right. I'll scoot that over and that looks a little bit too tall. So I'm just making these decisions on the fly. That's how you guys should be. Don't get precious with it. Just move quickly, okay? All right, so I've got the spline. No, really, I do. Um, and I don't need the originals anymore. I can delete those. So here's my spline. I'm going to come over here to Surfaces, Revolve, and let's look at the options on this. Okay, so um, I'm going to reset the settings because this is likely what you're looking at um, is the default settings. It Just by um, coincidence, it selects Y, and the Y axis is the one that we want to revolve around. Down here is a little triad that shows you that it's Y up. The green is Y. We want to revolve around that axis, so we just got lucky. If we wanted X or Z, we could change that. Um, all right, we're going to start our sweep angle at zero degrees. That's fine. Um, we want cubic. We're going to go a full 360, so it's a closed circle. Um, but we do not want to output NURBS. Um, we want polygons, so click on this. We do not want to output triangles. We want four-sided polygons, quads. And standard fit is not really going to give us the control we want. We want to be in control of how many um, edge loops there are. So I hit General, and that gives us this U type and V type. All right, so um, I'll type in 10 and 10. And let's just see what that gives us. Apply. Okay, and then we'll scoot that to the right. And uh, let's go to perspective view. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, nine, nine sided shape. Um, really, what we want, and then there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten um, horizontals. I'm going to delete this thing and come back and change this to say 40 and 10 and let's see what we get. That was the 40 turned out to be the horizontal component which is not what we wanted so I'll delete that and let's change this back to say 10 and we'll make this 40 and hit apply. There that's a much better use of vertices and polygons. We've got the smoothness because we have the density, but we don't have um, too many on the vertical, and that's good because uh, we want to be in control of what we're doing here. I can make further refinements. Maybe 40 was too much, but for the sake of this tutorial, I think you guys get the picture. Okay, so um, let me define for you a word called parametric. Parametric is when we have a piece of geometry that is still um, being controlled by the equation of the spline. So if I go here and I click right, control vertex, watch what happens. I still have parametric control over this piece of geometry. And we can go and we can make edits. Um, let's make this bottom a little bit more realistic. So we'll move that up and maybe scoot this over and make it kind of a lip. And maybe that's a little bit too deep. And there's a little bit of a curve on that thing, like that. All right, so that's a little bit more in line with how the real Coke can looks. Let's scoot that over a little bit. And any other edits we want to make. So um, this might be a little bit too tall. And then bring that down. Okay, so that's parametric. Um, what we're going to do now is say, okay, all's well. I got all the changes I want out of that spline. Now I'm going to come over here. I'll close this. And I'm going to go to Edit, Delete by Type, 
and delete history. And watch what happens. I'm going to go to the attribute editor here. <clears throat> Notice all these tabs that we've got. The Lambert and the shading group, that's by default. Every piece of geometry is going to have those. We can change those later. Here's the revolve. This is the information I gave it um, to sweep around the y-axis. Here's the tessellations, um, our, our 10 and our 40. And if we, hey, if we wanted to change these right here, we can because it's still parametric. But, um, and then over here we've got some more default tabs. Now watch what happens when I come over here to edit, delete by type history. I've blown away that parametric. Now when I make changes over here, it's no longer associated with that piece of geometry. So we've kind of abandoned our spline. We can delete it. Uh, another thing we want to do is let's get the pivot point in the center. That's modify center pivot. And then let's freeze the transformations because when we go to our attribute editor, we've got a translate x at 9.742. Um, it's kind of off in space. You can see I'm changing that value as I scoot it over. If we go to modify freeze transformations, look, it zeroes that out. So now we've got a cl totally clean piece of geometry. That's good. That's what we want. All right, so let's, let's do a little bit more cleaning on this geometry. You might have recalled me saying in class that you, as, a, as a role, as a chiseled in stone rule of modeling, you want every vertice to work for you. Always remember that every vertice has to be doing something for you in your model. So these vertices, I double click that edge, they're not doing anything for me. They're not contributing anything at all. So I can hit control backspace to get rid of those. I'll do that again here. Now watch what happens if I only hit backspace and not control backspace. I go to vertex. Those vertices are still there. That's a problem. That's not good modeling. So I'm going to undo that and then make sure I hit control backspace so that when I go and look at the vertices, they're not there. Okay. Let's also get rid of this edge and then this extra edge is probably not doing enough, enough for me. What else can we get rid of? Maybe that one. So you can see I've just kind of, from a low poly modeling standpoint, gone around and gotten rid of the extraneous stuff that isn't really contributing much to our overall model. I'm reducing poly count. I'm increasing performance. And just kind of have a clean model. Okay, so <clears throat> now the next step is to work on the top here. Um, if I open up that picture of the top, look at this lip that. Um, defines kind of the big mouth um, where the can opens right there. Uh, that's probably the most difficult feature to make on this can and that's what I want to work, work on now. So let's go to our four view again. In the top view, let's load in that background image plane. And then let's scoot it over so and scale it so that it fits our geometry. I can either move the can over there or move the picture over here. And I'll hit space to go to a full view. Don't need those tools anymore. And hit R scale this picture down and let's make it the, the can let's see through the can so that we can line that up perfectly I'm pretty close but we want to be as precise as we can alright so we've got the, the background image lined up with the geometry go back to our wireframe. Now um, let's go to perspective view. Grab this background image, slide it down so it's just kind of in the background. Um, 
let's set up some layers to control um, kind of the organization of our scene. I'm going to hide that grid because that's not useful. So when I click on the attribute edit editor button, it's the third from the right up here. Um, here I am in the attribute editor. Let's get out of it. And notice down here in display, I've got some buttons. On the far right is a button called create a new layer. It's the blue dot with the little star next to it. I click that. That makes a new layer. I'm going to double click and I'm going to type in BG images stands for background images. I need to make sure that I use an underscore here otherwise Maya will throw up and spell that right. Okay so I made a layer called BG images. Now when I select the background image I can right click and add selected objects and now when I change that V for visibility that hides it. Okay so let's also while this is selected come over here select that background image, right click, add selected objects. And now when I, ch and I toggle the visibility on and off, okay, so that's useful. Let's make another layer, double click on that, and let's call that um, body can. Because what I want to do is I'm going to select that edge, come up here to my polygon menu, and I want to edit mesh, edge, detach. Now look what happens. Um, I have two separate, uh, two, two different pieces of geometry here. I've got by faces the body of the can and the aluminum top. But I need to be careful because all that I've done by selecting that edge and going up here and saying um, detach is I've just put a seam, I've put a, an edge between all of these faces and the, the aluminum top faces. If I come up to object mode and I select it, it's still one object. So um, what I want to do further is go to faces, double click. I double clicked anywhere down here and it selected all the faces in this can part. Come up to mesh and separate and now I've made two separate objects. Here's the body and here's the top. All right, and now I can come over here to body can, right click, add selected objects, and then I can hide it. It looks like um, I need to select the background image here and add that to that. Somehow got those mixed up. Okay, so then let's just for to be clean here, let's create another layer and let's call this top can save and what that gives me is um, come over here select the top can add select objects now I've got the top I've got in its own layer I've got the body in its own layer and I've got the background images in its own layer. This is clean modeling practice and definitely the kind of habit you want to get into because as your scenes get more and more complex um, it's important for you to organize them because when you're working in a studio you'll work on a file you'll put it into a, a network or a, a, a share folder and someone you probably won't know or, or aren't aware of is working will open up your file and try and work with it. If you haven't cleaned it up and use professional practices, they'll get frustrated with your work, and you don't want that. Okay, so I've got these two objects, and notice that my pivot point is way over here in space. It's at zero comma zero. If I show the grid, you can see that. So let's um, let's snap that to the center of that. We go here, modify, center pivot, and then do the same thing for the body. All right, I want to hide the body because we're working on the top part here. And let's go to our top view. 
and let's turn on our background images. It looks like I've contrived to move that a little bit. Turn on wireframe. And what I want to do is place some vertices um, so that I can rotoscope them, I can move them around. Okay, so um, I'll go to perspective mode because that's probably a better way to show this. And what I'm going to do, I've got the top selected, go to edit mesh, sorry, mesh tools and insert edge loop tool. I'm in that mode and it's giving me instructions to click drag on edges. Watch what happens here. I'll click drag and then let's do maybe another one and then another one. So I, I'll do that again. I come up here to edit mesh, mesh tools, um, insert edge loop tool, and I click drag one, two, and three. Okay. Now let's see, go back to my top view, turn on wireframe, and what can we do with those things? So I, the, the outer ring is this ring. I hit scale and I can make some adjustments. I'm, I'm scaling this thing in and out so that it lines up with the top of this lip right here and then close to the top of the lip right there. Okay, and then I'll grab this lip and let's scale that and really I'm just, I just need the vertices so I'll just kind of do it somewhere in the middle and then I'll grab the next one and then what I'm going to try and do is just again provide more vertices so I'm looking at this curve right here and that's probably where those vertices will land so now go to vertex mode look at all these vertices I've got this is fairly dense remember it was I, I made 40 segments um, all the way around like spokes on a wheel there's 40 of them that might be too much so here's what I want to do just um, to be clean I'm double clicking on every other spoke oops undo I'm going to go from 40 to 20 so that I have fewer vertices to fight with. Oh, I've somehow managed to double it. So here, let's try that again. Yeah, I'm going to have a double space right here. So um, the trick would be to use 41 or 39 so that you get an odd number. Um, but anyway, you see what I'm doing here. I'm going to make sure I hit Control Backspace. That gets rid of um, half of the density here. And then I can go to Vertex. And I'm going to use the Move tool. And I'm only going to move in the in this axis, the Z and the X axis. I do not want to move in the Y axis at all. And this green square can help me achieve that. So I'm just going to select and I'm rotoscoping here. Remember that AHA video I showed you in class of the old um, fine art line, uh, line drawings on top of the live action video, you're kind of doing the same thing here and you're just kind of rotoscoping to a photographic image. Okay, so let's scoot that over like that. This is a symmetrical object, so if I only wanted to do half of it, I could then come back and, and mirror it over. I'll do that with the tab later. It's fairly low poly.
All right, so I've kind of defined if I go to if I go to shaded mode, um, I've kind of defined how that looks. It's a little lopsided. I want to be a little bit more clean. And that's the advantage of just doing one side and mirroring it over. Also, the reason why I separated these two parts into body can and top can is I didn't want to see the geometry through this can. Makes it a little bit easier to work with. Okay. Um, so some criticism here because I didn't have 41 or 39 revolved pieces I've kinda got this anomaly right here it's okay I can live with that work around it and then um, it's still a little wobbly if I want that machined look I wanna try to take as much wobble out as I can okay so now what um, let's go to face and let's select these faces Go to perspective mode. And let's come up here to um, edit mesh um, in the faces, extrude, and let's push those down a little bit. And then go to the scale tool, scale that in. Let's go to edge mode, double click on the edge, gives me that outer perimeter. And come up here to um, Ed, edit mesh and edge and let's bevel that and that kind of put in a little bit of a added detail on that perimeter okay so that if we go back to our source that's kind of a little bit of what's happening here I might have overdid that bevel so let's come back undo and then let's go into the settings of the bevel it defaults to 0.5 let's make that 2.5 apply there it's a little it's half the size of what it was a second ago all right it's making sense now when I revolved and then I extruded this piece down it left these artifacts here in the center so I'm going to hit face double click delete edit delete and then go to vertex um, and then I can scale these things to a point don't go too far if I go too far they're now overlapping and I could collapse those into a single vertice okay so let's zoom in well I suppose I can just do this go to oops wrong way I can grab the edge double click get that ring come up here to edit mesh um, in edges collapse didn't do it to the center though all right so there's that center let's let's make the tab <clears throat> there's a variety of ways of doing this uh, in class you might recall that I, I made uh, from splines why don't I hide this top for now and let's go to our top view in class I kind of did the same thing I made some splines create CV curve tool and I walked around the perimeter like that and you know then we can hit enter and make an additional spline enter and eventually build up this thing I, I kind of think this is a, a more difficult way to do it in in the interest of just kind of keeping it simple um, let's delete these splines and let's do it a different way I want to go to polygons I want to create um, polygon primitive a plane so here is my plane and 
let's just kind of scoot this thing in. I want to go to Vertex and I am going to box model this tab. Now check this out. I've made this plane. I've kind of moved the vertices in space. I'm definitely in the top view. I'll go to edge, select that edge, and then here's the extrude button. Extrude. Okay, I can use the rotate Rotate tool, go to vertex, I'm just going to move these vertices around to kind of edge model, box model um, this tab. I think this will be a much easier way. than doing it from splines. So I'm just kind of walking myself around. I press the extrude button. Rotate that. And let's say I want to add an intermediate edge right here. That's easy to do. Just come up here to um, insert edge loop tool and then remember click drag on edges. Enter. And let's go to the vertex, and then we can just move that. So I only want to make half of this so that I can mirror it over when I'm done. I'm going to push forward and finish the rest of this because I don't want to consume the next 15 minutes of your life you just watching me make this stuff. Um, and then you'll, you'll see what I'm talking about. Okay, so this is kind of like the cooking show where you make a recipe, put it in the oven, and then an hour later you have the finished result. <clears throat> this only took about 15 minutes and just the highlights are when I last left you I'd only done this part. I just grabbed this edge and just used the extrude button, pushed it this way, did it again, did it again, moved this way, moved around the corner here. Uh, I grabbed these faces, I copied them, and I put them right here and just move the vertices around. Now I'm at the point where I can just grab these vertices and let me show you a trick about lining up vertices. I've only grabbed these along the central axis. I'm going to hit R for scale and what I'm going to do is just drag this and notice how that those vertices are suddenly becoming all perfectly aligned and that's how you use the scale tool on the vertice level to do that. Okay so now I've got this tab and I'm ready to duplicate it across. So let's see, let's go find where the mirror is. It's in mesh, mirror geometry. So let's look at the options. Um, let's just see if X, I don't think the X is what we want. We'll just see, we'll hit apply. Nope, X, that's not what we want. So undo. Um, it might be, there might be some problems in the geometry that I need to go fix. So let's just try the z-axis. No, that's not what we want. Let's do minus x. Yep, that's what we want. And I had the merge vertices and merge with the original options checked. And so it automatically welded that seam for us. We hit apply, close that. We can go hit faces, grab these faces and delete them. Um, it kind of threw up on this these points right here. Let's see if we can clean that up. So when I see problems like this, well, ideally you don't have that to begin with, but one of the nice things about tutorials is discovering how to fix stuff. So uh, I'll select this vertice that is all welded together. It's all fused together. Come up here to Edit Mesh, Vertex, Detach, and what that's going to do is break it into, I believe, four separate vertices. That's fine. Just move those away from each other. 
and then um, do the same thing over here and let's come up here to um, target weld which is also over here target weld in the melting in the mesh editing tools and then we can just real quickly clean up what we've got going on here okay so get out of that let's just kind of clean that up so the purpose of the reason why I wanted to use the mirror geometry tool is to get as perfect symmetry between the two sides as possible that's a little rough right there but we'll live with it all right let's go to perspective view object and look we've got some weird something going on right there so I need to clean that up um, click on vertex oh look the answer is there's a vertex there in the middle of space so uh, backspace gets rid of that and when we go to object mode still got some weird surface tension here I think it'll be okay for now vertex yeah we can come back and fix that at a future date alright so let's grab all of these faces by double clicking on it and let's come up to um, edit mesh in the face and extrude give it some depth let's go back to our source and look at this tab there's a bevel on the inside hole here on the outside there's these little horns that are artifacts of how that thing was um, I guess it was injection molded so let's see if we can recreate those let's go to edge double click it didn't go all the way around because that pole right there so double click and then come up to bevel let's do the same thing on this inner one and then let's get the outer so if we tumble around this thing oh now we see the reason why there was a little bit of an anomaly there um, because we got some vertices that are dimpled down so here's how we can fix that let's double click all those faces probably easier to go back in time before we had these edges on there oops let's just grab the top faces okay so I just selected the top oh, I've got the bottom as well just want the top faces and remember when I was showing you a second ago about how to use the scale tool to get vertices aligned let's do the scale tool to get all the um, the polygons on this top aligned the first step though is to get the pivot point in the center pivot points in the center now we go to faces let's just grab the top faces there hit the scale tool hit the scale tool and the axis point is way over here so check this out you can go to your scale pivot and change that to object and that will snap it down to the selection you've got and now just in the vertical axis I'm dragging this middle axis point and I'm flattening out those polygons 
Let me do the same thing on the other side. I'll double click those, deselect everything except that, and then using the scale tool, flatten out. So if you ever find yourself um, trying to planarize a whole bunch of vertices that are all wonky, this is how you do it. All right, it's, it's a useful, useful trick. Okay, so let's get back to putting a bevel on this guy. I selected all the edges that I want that bevel on. Come up here to Edit Mesh, Edge, Bevel, and we have a fatal crash. Awesome. Okay, back from my crash. No idea why it happened, but maybe this is a good time to explain uh, auto saving. So come up here to Window, uh, Settings, Preferences, Preferences, and come down here to Files and Projects. Click on that, and then Auto Save. You want to enable that. And in my case, I've set it for every eight minutes. It'll save a file. I clicked on Name Folder, and I told it to go to the default folder here. So. Man, there is no reason to not have this on. And just as you just saw a second ago, the thing crashed on me for no apparent reason. I was able to go back and um, pick up where I left off um, because I had autosave going. So if you ever um, have inexplicable crashes, you definitely need to set that up. Okay, so I'm essentially done with this tab. It might be a little bit too thick, so why don't I go to the side view here. Grab these bottom ones, scoot that up a little bit, and then let's bring back um, the top of our can. And move this into place. Okay, and then Maybe the last little detail that we want to throw in there is this little ring right here. Don't forget those horns if you want to try and attempt that, but um, this little ring, let's just quickly create a cylinder, create polygon cylinder, give it some height, scale that thing way down, and then let's move it into, into the bright spot. Still too big. I only want the top part of it. Well, let's see, why don't we go to wireframe, vertex, Grab the bottom, scoot that up, go back to solid, let's grab that outer edge, and bevel that. All right, so um, my assessment, my personal assessment here is that when we went from 40 segments to 20, now we're left with kind of, it's fairly chunky. It's kind of low poly. Now, from this distance, which if this were a 3D scene, that's probably as close as we get to it. Um, it's not a big deal, but the closer we get to it, the more it seems to fall apart. And then you can kind of see that glittering anomaly of that edge because it was 40 and not 41. So um, we can smooth this thing by pressing the three key. And that definitely improves the visual, um, the visual 
look of it. But the thing is with the smooth tool is that's not available in game engines and I don't want to I want to teach you guys to not rely on that. So let's maybe spend some time grabbing some of these edges and sharpening them up. So I know that that edge needs to be sharpened. So let's come here to normals, harden edge, and then let's grab the kind of bottom of that trowel and do the same thing. Let's see how that's looking. Still kind of low poly. Got an edge right in here that we should make soften. But for the most part, the model's done. And so if I were to do this all over again, I would probably leave the 40 um, instead of the 20 and, and just deal with those extra vertices to rotoscope to achieve this little lip piece there. I hope this has been helpful, and please ask questions if you're stuck, okay?